video I want to talk to you about some of the things that I used to do with the HX Stomp which I don't think I'd advise doing anymore and just look at some changes that I made to an older preset of mine which would have been one of the first presets that I made and just see what I'd advise doing or what I'd learned from then to now and uh, just talk about that. So um, one of the first things that I used to do was to use the amp and cab block combined I think there's a really, really good reason to split those up. So you use just the amp by itself and then a cab block or two. And the reason for doing that is that you can then use that preset as a template. So you could say, all right, I kind of always like these cab settings, which I find myself that I like to use similar cab settings so that I know what the differences between the actual amp models themselves are. Or likewise, you know, if you're auditioning a cab, I like to just change the cab and not the amp as well so you can make uh, more informed decisions in that way so separate your amp and cab block and the other cool thing about this is that you can put things between the amp and the cab so one of the things that I like to do is put an EQ there whether it's a low low high shelf or whatever multiband just put a mono EQ between the amp and cab block and then you've got something else which you can help to shape a tone so uh, one of the key things that I like to do there is put in like a low shelf boost uh, sometimes to kind of give more kick to the sound or some people like to put a kinky boost in between those two because they like the way that shapes the tone so that's something to bear in mind. Other really obvious thing that I used to do because I was trying to at the time I think much like the volume of a Kemper with the volume of this kind of down around halfway I used to go to the end output block and boost that by plus 20 dB I don't think that's a great idea looking back. So um, what you'll find is basically those presets will be super loud compared to everything else and annoy quite a lot of people who use them. Sorry about that. So now I keep that output block pretty much at zero and just either turn the volume up or adjust the things being slightly quieter to something which has quite a hot output. Um, if you turn it up all the way, uh, the volume control, I think you'll find you've got plenty of volume uh, I don't know exactly what I was trying to do at the time, but I probably didn't know what I was doing with the HX Stomp. I'm going to jump into the computer now and just show you a couple more things on screen. Right, okay, so here I've got two presets, and so this is the, the one that I found that I'd made a while ago. So what we've got going on here, we've got a red squeeze going into the old style screamer, so the legacy, uh, going into the archetype lead, and going into a couple of IRs, well, an IR, sorry, and then into a cab, and then into a delay. Uh, so, sorry, there's the cab, and there's the IR, and there's the delay. So, a few things to say when I'm thinking about this. So, I think now when I look at this, it's a fair bit of drive. This is the PRS Archon drive channel. I don't know if you need the compressor as well as the tube screamer as well as the archetype lead so that was one of the first changes that I made actually I was like well I don't really need that red squeeze um, and I noticed I don't have a reverb on this preset and I think that was because I ended up with uh, some limitations um, because I'm using the red squeeze into the tube screamer and uh, you get what I mean so that was one of the things that really doesn't need to be there if you're using a tube screamer into a, a driven amp with the Saga 8.9 you're already fairly compressed as it is so I got rid of that and that then freed up a little bit of DSP actually so that you can then add some other things so the next thing I kind of thought was this transistor tape delay since I'm just using it for delay it's not really an ambient tone or anything this is quite a DSP intensive block with transistor tape and so I think nowadays I would probably just opt to use the dual delay um, for a couple of reasons really it's less DSP generally and uh, you can set this modulation off is generally what I would do I'd bring that mix down though uh, also if I go back here the mix I've got set quite high there 40% mix on the delay these days I would probably not really take that above sort of 20, 23, 26 as you can see there. That's kind of about as far as I would go with having that much delay. So 
Another thing, I don't think I'd use this legacy tube screamer anymore. This was something I was familiar with the sound of back in the day. Um, now I'm fairly confident that the newer drives are probably better uh, knowing what I know about how Line 6 are doing things now. So I would use this Scream 808 in that place. Another thing that I wouldn't do though, so like I've got the mids dimed here at 9.5 pretty much. I probably wouldn't any longer boost that with a tube screamer because that's going to kind of double up that mid boost. So what I might use instead, I might use the OCD if I could fit that on there. Or I might use the Timmy. I think I'd use something without the mid boost just because that's already quite mid pushed anyway. Um, so not necessary really. If we go over to the cab section, I've not altered the distance of this mic and I think nowadays I kind of prefer to just keep this distance as low as possible at one and also I quite like the sound of early reflection so I generally will put that up to 20% now and mic wise 57 is, is solid um, a fairly balanced sound I find the condenser microphones so they have like a, a good balance of um, mids, lows and highs in my opinion uh, so I'd probably use one of those and this is still the IR that I go for these days the high cut I think I'd be even more um, willing to take that even lower if I'm finding something to be slightly fizzy and so when you look at the same preset if I rebuilt this uh, using the Diana drive now which I think is maybe a slightly flat response than I think anyway a slightly flat response than a tube screamer um, into the archetype I turned the sag way down though because I think it maybe was a little bit over compressed and sounding a little bit small before and I also I think upped this depth control um, which I probably wouldn't have known about early on with the HX Stone but you'll find that there's quite a lot of controls sometimes that are at the end so like on the derailed Ingrid you'll find that there's a control at the end of bright switch um, and these depth switches are often towards the end of the control so if you're editing on the device you won't always see them um, you see I've changed the mic to a 57 changed that distance brought that high cut down and brought that down then consider whether you want it hard panned or not I think that's uh, something for you to decide and then you see these dual delays they're sorted um, as I said 26% and then I've added a glitz delay on the end because I had some kind of spare DSP left over and so those are the settings that I like. The glitz delay is actually a really um, DSP polite um, reverb to use. The other thing to consider is routing or routing however you want to say that. Anything that I've got going before the cabs, before the amp, I would use mono exclusively and anything that I've got after the cabs particularly if I've got a pan hard left and right here, I would use a stereo uh, block. That's kind of my hard and fast rule for that. I'm not really sure of any reason that you want to do anything else in that case. But basically there's no real reason for any of this stuff here that goes before the amp to be stereo because it will just get summed to mono with these blocks anyway. Um, you could put something stereo here. Um, because we get this pan thing or stereo after it certainly but no need to go stereo if it's before the amp and cab in my opinion um, so those were just some things and like I said this I used to boost back in the day um, not really necessary I find any more uh, so just be careful about boosting that thing because that's the sort of thing that as you change between presets you might end up sending something really hot to the front of the house um, so those are some of the things that I noticed that I would do differently with this particular preset um, and you saw me switching between those two tones in the intro, I don't know if you noticed them, but one of them certainly had a bit more dynamic range, a bit more of a response in the lower end and I think just sounded a little bit better for me. Um, so that was some changes that I made. So those were just some of the things that I would have done differently with that preset. So hopefully that was vaguely interesting or useful in some way to one or two people. Um, you know, I think the HX Stomp and the Helix stuff has a bit of a learning curve. Uh, so these are just some of the things that I would have done differently had I known. So feel free to like or subscribe or both.
to jest 